Well. Well, well, well. We are back once again, guys. We are. Jason here, along yep. with my good friend Darnell. Yep. Excited for another podcast. Getting ready to talk about some more R and B and Kanye R&B. West. Kanye Wizzle. Now, Darnell, uh, we recently reviewed one of Kanye's albums last week, Eight uh, Awaits and Heartbreaks. I do and, remember uh, that. Had a very deep conversation, but this week I'd like to get into a uh, what? Oh, we're on the wrong channel. Oh, oh, we, oh this is our sorrow we turn. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is Dude, Justin. I told you. I told you. I thought we, this is Justin here uh, with uh, Daryl. Daryl, yes. <laughs> with our, uh, our metal. <laughs> we love <laughs> metal. <laughs> yep, big fans. Heavy metal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorrow, what? External? E- eternal. Sorrow and I'm, and I'm, uh, Eternal. Sorrow eternal here. And uh, we have some exciting things to talk about today. Very just, exciting. Let me just get the right notes here. I'm so excited. Um, all right. Yep, we're going to talk about these metal bands. bands. Yeah, metal bands. Yeah. Metal bands. Um, well, Justin, why don't you, uh, you know, since you like talking so much about metal music and metal bands, uh, I think you have this band from France that you wanted to talk about. They are um, French. I don't um, know if they're from France, but they are French. Well, who are they? Uh, they are Dark Tribe, one word. Dark Tribe, one word. Yes. That's uh, a I really mean, weird band No, no, name. it's Dark Tribe, but it's one word. Okay, so it's Dark Tribe, but it's one word. No, no, no. It's, there's no but it's one word. It's just one word, and the name is Dark Tribe. Ha! Dark Tribe, ha! No, 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 <laughs> damn it. Oh, uh, oh man, all right. Anyways, well, who's on first? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the name of the album is uh, interesting. And... Mr. Seti Victoria. Oh, yes. That's what I was just going to say, that, Mr. Seti. Victoria. Which I, I actually, when I read that, I assumed they were Italian, but uh, but they're not. They're French. You and you're assuming. And there's four of them. Uh, it's a capital V, by the way, for Victoria, not a capital A at the end, like some other bands. Like some other bands that we'll talk about next week. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so these guys are French. They are also from France. Okay. And this is... Uh, Very informative you are today. Yeah. And this is their debut album. Their debut? Yeah. and I thought it was pronounced debit. Nope. Uh... You may be right, actually. So all those times people want my debit card, they're actually talking about my debut card? Yes. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I feel like such a fool. Yep, yep. Well, um, have oh, you seen sorry. the... Have, Heavy metal. Have you seen the album cover to this? Uh, yeah, I, I looked at it. And how it looks like, you know, Atlantis. Yes, basically. yes. Um, you know, of course, that's what attracted me to this album right well, away. Well, yeah, you are a big fan of artwork. We yeah. know that. So uh, the album cover was awesome. Okay. And that led me to the music which I actually really liked. Um, definitely some solid power metal. Well, I'm just throwing this out there, but that looks like the uh, the Colosseum there. Is this supposed to be Rome underwater? No. No. Yeah, actually, it does look a lot like that. That is the Colosseum, right? Well, there is a, a track called Rome. Rome. Oh, well, I assume it's Rome underwater. Rome, three. Rome, oh, not 3. 21. Rome 21. Anyway, sorry. Um... The only thing that I had an issue with this album was that there are certain times in the album that got kind of plain. Plain how? Um, I don't want to say repetitive, but it was just generic. Okay. Um, I guess there were some parts that just kind of got boring. Like, oh yes, this is average power metal. Let me change it now. You know, um, but the solos were awesome. Solos were very awesome, and the double bass—they had a lot of double bass too, which was good. Um, they had one or two ballads, so they mixed it up a little bit. But um, most—oh, most of the songs were like four or five minutes long. But the last track was. Um, let me see. The name of the last track was. Uh, uh, life, love, and death. Okay. And that was over seven minutes long, and that, act, that ended up being my favorite um, out of the whole thing because they actually included. It was like a mixture. It op- opened up in like a ballad form with uh, soothing strings and a lot of orchestration, and then later got faster and heavier. And the, the song structure just kind of reminded me of like Avantasia. Really? Yeah. That's good. Um, That's never a bad thing. Yeah. So. I mean, I guess throughout the album, I was comparing them, you know, left and right to different power metal bands, so they didn't fully stand out, but I think they, uh, 
they have something good going for themselves. Well, do you think that, you know, maybe because we listen to so much music, it becomes harder to stand out to yeah. us? Yeah, that's possible. Very possible. But, I mean, all in all, it was good. Yeah, but what, what what would we do to fix that, you know? Not hey, listen to the music. Well, yeah, it's basically, you know... Go back to Kanye West? Like, what? <laughs> it's really just kind of holding up to a standard, really. Yeah. So, you know, our standard just happens to be... Yeah. A little higher than, yeah. than some. I mean, I give them an 8 out of 10. That's Me fair. Meaning, you know, really suggesting to people that they... they it, it's not a waste of time. That they definitely should check the album out. Well, and again, that's, uh, you know... That's a good thing. That's what my 8 out of 10 says. So next time you see 8 out of 10, you know exactly what I'm saying now. I know exactly. Well, I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Um... Yep, and I already found a typo in my uh, review. <laughs> well, that's good. So. Well, the good thing is uh, I'm actually fixing something for you, too. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going <laughs> to fix that. Uh, you didn't include their official site. Oh, I just put their MySpace, yeah. You and that MySpace. You know, you're never going to let MySpace die, are you? <laughs> my face. My book. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Now, did you want to talk about one today? I mean, I could just let you talk about, you know, MySpace, (laughs) Kanye West some more, but uh, I would like to take a minute to talk about a new EP by a band called ARK. Does that sound familiar? Hey, I know ARK. Yeah. Now, see, ARK had an EP called Shatner, which made our list of the best EPs of 2012, despite the fact that it was actually released in 2010. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. That's so, right. um, you know, that's That was our our midway, though. That wasn't our full... Yeah, well... But, yeah. But, you know, it's, uh... You know, 2010, yeah. Little did we know. It's yeah, so yeah. good, it transcends the year. Supplies. But now they have a new EP out. It's called EP1, because it's the first EP that they're releasing, and I guess they have some other stuff in the works here, so I that's always have good. named it Year One, but that's fine. Uh, and now, one thing to point out about this is that it's four tracks, you know, as a typical EP is, and it's re- it was recorded in a live setting. Not like, I don't not necessarily the show, okay. but... You know, live, not like in studio, but it was done like live with them all playing together. And but there know, was a crowd. No, there was not a crowd. Okay, it's just live. Okay, so they just did like one take. Yeah, like okay. one take. They didn't, you know, it was no. Uh, you oh, know, like cut, cut and yeah, bass, no, cut you know, bass. the yeah, guitar yeah. player does his part, then the bass player was all recorded live. Cool. So now, uh, as you know, maybe you remember, the band Ark has a really awesome guitarist named Taz Durania, mm. who uh, in their bio is listed as a beard with a genius hanging off of it. Uh, which I think suits him well. So this new EP is four songs, as I said, and it's exactly what you expect it to be. Based on the Shatner EP, this is absolute, really heavy groove metal. It just, everything is a guitar groove, and Durania is absolutely fucking awesome, and a lot of his riffs are just, you get your head moving right from the start, and it's not going to stop. And seeing this band live would be awesome, because they would be the kind of band that would just get the whole crowd moving. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, one of the songs I really wanted to to point out is uh, the song Live Through, which I guess they released uh, as a single, mm. uh, but it's absolutely awesome. It's got this heavy stomp to it, and there's some, you know, some growling in there, which they didn't really do on the Shatner EP. It was mostly clean singing, so this has, like, kind of his raspy clean singing a little bit of kind of a scream growl or a scrowl as we've we've dubbed it yeah yep. uh, little effects on the on the vocals it's really really awesome and the bass line is fucking incredible so i i think that you know this doing eps is always kind of dangerous because if you don't you know if you only get four songs to show what you have what you've been working on and you one of them sucks or two of them suck or maybe three of them are okay it's dangerous because that could really kill you. But what they've done is, you know, they really did four awesome tracks. They did four awesome tracks on Shatner. Now this album, the one, it's it's kind of an issue for me and kind of a not a non-issue. But this album is actually three new tracks, and then they took a song from the Shatner EP and they redid it, added some extra solos to it, and they just kind of polished it a bit. Mm. Uh, it was the song Reward, which was track three on the Shatner EP, but. You know, when you do it in that live setting, it gives you a chance to expand on some of the stuff, which I thought was cool. That's cool. So if you're in for some groove metal, you just like, you know, bobbing your head and, you know, you think about, you know, do you like spending your time with your fist in the air, Justin? <laughs> then ARK is the band for you. There you go. I just did a commercial for it. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Make t-shirts uh, so like that. definitely keep an eye on them because they're, they're just getting better every time. Good old ARK from the UK. 
Oh boy, it's another good week for music. Yeah. So now um, I'm looking at the calendar here, mm -hmm. and today is September second. Can you believe that? No, I cannot actually. We're into September already. That's crazy. So, you know what that means? What does that mean? You know, April showers. They bring May flowers. May flowers bring June bugs. All right, these are 808 and our June, <laughs> June bugs move into it's the month of July. Oh, July oh. leaves you to Augustus Glute from Willy Wonka, oh, no. which leads you to September Morning, which was a band that you reviewed, if I'm not mistaken. In Morning? No, September Morning. Oh. I think was a band that you reviewed. If well, not, I don't know it. what you're rambling about, but uh, I'll tell you what. When you said July, that reminded me that we have to do a band of the month for September. Yes, we already did July. I know. I'm just saying. Just in September. July. Oh, September. <laughs> yeah, September. You can't really make that sound any more Asian, huh? No, no, you can't. Yeah. No, no, you can't make it sound any more Asian. <laughs> so, um, in the typical band of the month style, the way we've done this just about every damn time, I'm gonna say. So, hey, Justin. Who's our band of the month for September? Catatonia! Woo! Oh, confetti! My hey, oh my god, I wish you guys could see this. There's confetti raining from the ceiling it's and crazy. glitter we everywhere. Got balloons and squirrels. Oh my god, this balloon is amazing. Squirrels? squirrels. <laughs> balloon squirrels? Yes. Oh, Boy, you never celebrated like that? Alright, never mind. Anyways, the yeah. Thing. Catatonia. And, well, I guess the, the, the first question I'll ask you why Catatonia? Well, because you forced me into it. Hey, listen, I didn't force you. I just kind of gave you the option of Catatonia or Lose Your Arms. No, it, uh, it actually was an amazing album, and uh, we listened to it often, and I'm still listening to it often, and I uh, cannot stop listening to it. Well, so then know. let's take a minute here, or five. Let's take ten. Let's talk about Dead End Kings. Okay. Which is the name of the new album, yep. which we've been listening to probably way too much. Yep. Um, so what, I mean, what, do you, what stands out about it? I love, I love that they have a female singer in one of the tracks. Yes. The one you are looking for is not here. It's not? It should be... Oh, <laughs> I see what you did. I see what you did. That's the title. Anyways, yeah. No, that changed everything. Even though it was just the one track, uh, it was just really different. And on top of that, um, another element is a lot... Like you mentioned before last week when we talked about it. Um, a lot more keyboards and synthesizers. Yep. And not Different like effects a heavy general. dose, but little sprinklings here and there just for like accent. Yeah. So enough, like, you know, enough to give them a different type of sound. Yep. A little added were, depth. A yeah. little, yeah. I agree. And those two things stood out for me too. The female vocals I thought were perfect. Yeah. And we had always said that, you know, especially after they did the, uh, the duet with Krister Linder on oh, The yeah, Barter, was, we had said great. like, you know, a female vocalist could really do them good. Mm hmm I would listen to a million songs with yeah, the two of yeah. them together. I think this is a good way to go about it, to just have like one or two songs featuring somebody, yep. you know, kind of like uh, So All the Sun does, you know. Exactly. They don't, they don't have an official female, you know. Yeah. But every once in a while, and it's, for So All the Sun, it's the same girl most of yep. the time, which is cool. Uh, and in this case, I mean, who knows where they'll go with this woman here. I'm curious what, you know, the fans at large think about this song. I was kind of you know, waxing poetic about that in the review, how I was wondering what the Catatonia fans would think of this album. Like, mm -hmm. their fans as a whole, their millions of fans. What are they going to think about this album? Yeah. Is this another step in the right direction? Like, you know, wow, they've evolved and here's what they're doing? Or are people going to say, like, fuck, female <laughs> singer, keyboards, fucking pussies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I just can't, I, I don't Some know. <laughs> Though, you know, I have to say... The you know, I'm sure there are going to be idiots well, yeah, out there. Just like course. Opeth, when we saw Opeth, just, and they're playing, you know, the yeah. heritage stuff, and there's people going, no, play Demon of the Fall, because yeah. they don't want to hear new shit. They yeah. want to hear the same shit over and over again. There's uh, always going to be those those people. I think that one of the songs that sticks out to me, two actually, in a row? Holy shit, in a row. When you listen to the album all the way through so many times... Mm -hmm. Back to back buildings yep. and leech. And leech, yeah. I was gonna say leech, definitely. And buildings has one of the catchiest hooks on the album. Yep. One of the best, you know, lyrical passages. It's awesome. And then Leech has that whole jazzy piano thing yeah, going. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, really big change. And that's that's one thing that I really like about the direction that the band went in, in general, is that Automatically, you can tell that this is a Catatonia album. You can tell by the, their sound. Yet, at yep. the same time, they 
they changed so much in each track and for them to pull it off like that and to, and to have it a 10 out of 10 album yeah. you know what I mean like it's that's awesome um, but yeah Leech definitely you know I was for a second had to make sure I was listening you know to the right CD like as if someone yep. switched it on me or something because yeah it's it's a lot different than what they usually do but there's definitely those uh, elements that, that you can still recognize that it's them you know a lot of their guitar riffs and just the well, their style of play and I think that for anyone who hasn't heard it yet who's intending to I think the, the big change in this album was this is not a heavy guitar driven album whereas Night is the New Day and Great Cold Distance before this were very distorted guitars. You know, that was the punch in every song. Yeah. And this, this album is not like that. There's a lot more fancy bass work. Yeah. I think that musically, the drums actually command a lot of the attention on yeah. this album. Yeah, definitely. Which I, I, you know, kind of threw me off a little bit because I was waiting for just that one really heavy guitar song. Mm. And honestly, you wait until Dead Letters at the end before you get that like one really heavy, it, punchy song. Yeah, that's when it really drops and I can't I'm not complaining in the least and I mean it threw me off at first but you know yeah. I think that on the whole but now what do you think of this album looking back let's go back two albums let's go back Night is the New Day Great Cold Distance and this one together how do you feel about these three albums being in a row like where do you think this is going and um 